Hello, my name is Erica and I am 21 years old studying political science and mass communication here at the University of Minnesota. Um, over the summer, I got to get the chance to read and watch many videos and readings regarding the um, systems of oppression and power structures, um, uh, not only within this course, but in many other courses I took uh, um, throughout the summer. Uh, I found this overlap interesting. Um, there are a lot of the same readings assigned to through multiple through multiple classes of mine, and I found this overlap interesting because it shows how truly complex um, social issues are in the United States, and how they don't just there's not like clear cut definitions or answers to anything, um, especially when it comes to like politics and ideas and ideologies and democracy and um, things like that. So I'm still pretty uncomfortable talking about the topics of race and privilege um, because I am a white female. I don't really know my place in the discussion yet, um, which I'm, I'm learning and I'm putting in work to learn my place in the discussion. It's just um, proved difficult. I um, think that, well, the video uh, from Unit 3 titled, uh, Why Does Privilege Make People So Angry? Um, it kind of normalized the feelings I have about it, and I know that it's it's not. It the video was made to make white people feel more comfortable around the concept of privilege, and I understand that, um, and it it worked. I mean, it did its job. I appreciated the way she presented it, and um, it just helped me have a better understanding of like what people go through and um, how people live, like just in their daily lives. Because I mean, I'm white and I'm female. I don't experience these transgressions as much or yeah um and I think I talked about this in my journal too um but I do have this friend um she is someone that I can go that I feel comfortable going to with questions about race and um oppression and privilege and she is a woman of color and she is so gracious with her answers and I appreciate her so much because I wouldn't have the knowledge that I do today without her and I wouldn't be the same person I am without her. Um, but she did remind me when we first started talking about these kinds of things that it is not a person of color's responsibility to justify or explain their experiences to me. Um, she puts in the extra emotional labor for me and I am so appreciative of that and I recognize that. Um, but she did put that kind of on my radar so that when I'm talking to other people of color that I'm aware of that as well. Um, this brings me to talking about um, intersectionality in the feminist movement. Um, the feminist movement is obviously whitewashed. It's dominated by white, mem white women. Um, and I think this is a problem because the tasks on their agenda don't always align with the agendas of women of color. And that's something that needs to be added to the conversation. Um, I found the reading, um, oh, I forget what unit, but it is from the Kombahi uh, River Collective, um, their kind of statement. Um, they, it was written 30 plus years ago, but it reads like it could have been written today, which I find interesting to, and says something kind of about the progress made in the feminist movement in regards to women of color. But um, besides that, I think I like, uh, there was one quote that I liked, um, she writes, or yeah, they write, the major source of difficulty in our political work is that we are not just trying to fight oppression on one front or even two, but instead to address a whole range of oppressions. Um, they do not have, we do not have racial, sexual, heterosexual, or class privilege to rely upon, nor do we even have minimal access to resources and power that groups who possess any one of these types of privilege have. So I think this does a really good job of um, talking about privilege and kind of get like explaining that the cards the cards they've been given and kind of what they're fighting for and how the, their fight is different um, than the fight of a white feminist and um, yeah I think that's super important to recognize and it's obviously a huge part of the feminist movement as a whole. So. Continuing to talk about feminism and the feminist movement, I really enjoyed reading um, Sarah Ahmed's book, Living a Feminist Life. Um, I did because it so 
growing up where I did, I don't think I had a lot of experiences that would be um, classified as oppressive. I mean, obviously there's like the little things like, oh, girls being good at reading and writing and guys being good at math and science, like, like the obvious things. But when it came to like actual real experiences, um, I don't think I had very many of those. Um, like um, when she talked about how she experienced a man flashing her or like um, being whistled at and um, like just like things that would happen to her when she was a child that made her cut herself off and like become so cautious about the way she was living her life as to not attract any attention just it really hit me that like the feminist movement is a lot bigger than I um, previously thought it was um, and I, I appreciated how she when she told those stories, she, um, instead of using the word I, as in her telling it from the first person, she cha she um, changed it to you. So it, it was as if I was potentially experiencing it or retelling. And um, this kind of, <laughs> this kind of, it brings me to talk about the fifth journal entry that I wrote and kind of when I was first exposed to feminism and to answer the question of, what does feminism mean to me? And so I was took this class called Modern Problems, taught by a teacher that really made feminism accessible to me. And she explained it in um, a way that it went beyond like the women's suffrage movement that was taught in all history classes and kind of made it more modern. And I also have this friend that really inspired me. Her name is Sydney. She really inspired me to um, think more critically about the feminist movement. Um, for example, I remember having a conversation with her, actually in this class, actually. Um, and I feel like uh, things are usually uh, like portrayed against each other. Like it's either one thing is right and or it's wrong or like, like there's one right and one wrong. And so I was talking to her and she was talking about how like careers and how women want to have careers and the wage gap. And I was like, and I remember saying to her, what if a woman wants to be at, like, what if a woman wants to be a stay-at-home mom? Like, what what's wrong with that? And she goes, and I remember her telling me that that is what feminism is fighting for. It's fighting for the right to choose what you want to do, not based on gender stereotypes, not based on the norms that have been instilled in our society. And that really hit me because I just think so to answer the question what feminism means to me it's the right to choose what you want to do and the right to choose how you want to live without being judged and without feeling like you're doing something wrong and like yeah like so what if somebody wants to be a stay-at-home mom so what if a woman wants to have a career what if so what if a woman wants to have a career and kids like I mean obviously this is a super small portion of the spectrum of what feminism actually entails but that is when it truly dawned on me that it is a huge I, movement and it encompasses so many things and I think that's why a lot of people are confused about what they're actually fighting for and yeah I mean yeah that's what feminism means to me. Thanks for watching!